Well, from the 45th Congressional District, we have with us right now Congresswoman Mimi Walters. Always good to see oh, you. Oh, great to be back. Yes, welcome back. And uh, obviously, this is a busy time going on right now, but we're going to get into, uh, what, let's say, a little bit more positive things. Okay. <laughs> upbeat. We'll talk about. And uh, talk about a bill that you introduced that the president signed into law. Tell us yes, about I'm that. very excited. As a freshman, I got my first bill signed into law. And this president has only signed a little over 200 pieces of legislation in this last um, cycle. So mm -hmm. I'm very uh, happy that one of my piece of legislation got signed into law. And what it is, um, it has to do with uh, victims of sexual assault. A young okay. woman by the name of Amanda Wynn uh, met with me in June of this year, and she was talking about the frustration she was having um, after she had been a victim of sexual assault mm -hmm. and what she was having to go through in order to preserve her rape kit. And uh. what she learned is that every state has different laws when it comes to victims of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to change it. And what she had to do, um, she actually was a victim in Massachusetts. So mm -hmm. every six months, she had to call uh, law enforcement in Massachusetts in order to get her rape kit preserved. Really? And what she found in many states that these rape kits get destroyed before the statute of limitations happens. Ah. So um, I introduced wow. a piece of legislation that says um, if a person is a victim of sexual assault, mm -hmm. several things will happen. Now, again, this is only if a person is a victim on federal property because okay. states have their own <clears throat> rights. So okay. this is if a person is a victim on, let's say, um, a, in a national park or okay. is taken over state lines. Okay. Then what happens is... Um, this law says the person has to uh, be notified in writing if the rape kit is going to be destroyed. The rape kit cannot be destroyed until the statute of limitations is up. A victim has the right to have forensic evidence given to them okay. uh, so that they would know exactly what happened mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the evidence. Um, and. It, we also have a, com a committee that's being formed with the Department of Justice and um, the Health Department that is going to bring together experts in this field to give us best practices. Okay. So that as we continue, we will be sure that we are um, taking care of survivors of uh, sexual assault. All right. That's fantastic. So that was signed into law. It was Very signed good. into law, and it's bipartisan piece of legislation. We didn't have anybody um, vote against it. I introduced it with uh, Zoe Lofgren, who's a Democrat from uh, Northern California. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, bipartisanship, but uh, let's kind of move over to Republicans in the House. Have they put forth any sort of an agenda, kind of an upcoming? It, I, I know in a year like this, it might be kind of hard not knowing yeah. what different outcomes might be. Yeah. But We actually have a very good plan in place, and it's mm -hmm. called A Better Way. Okay. And under Speaker <clears throat> Ryan, he said, listen, we need to come up with a plan to show the American people what we stand for. Mm -hmm. And it's a six-point plan. Uh, first of all, it's how do we get the economy started again? I mean, many people are not better off today than they were eight or ten years ago. Right. And we really need to focus in on stimulating the economy. And one way we want to do that in one part of our plan says we need to cut back on government regulation. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, the government tends to overregulate when there's an issue, and we need to rein in government regulation so businesses have an opportunity to be able to flourish. Uh, that's the first part of the plan. The second part of the plan deals with tax reform. We haven't had tax reform in this country since 1986, since Reagan was mm -hmm. president. And we need to put forward comprehensive tax reform. Unfortunately, companies in um, this country are taxed at the highest rate of any industrialized nation. It's a 35% rate. So what we're seeing happening is corporations are forced to go outside this country. They're having their headquarters outside this right, country, exactly. and then they, they're not bringing the revenue back into America mm -hmm. because they're being taxed at such a high rate. So the investment in America is not happening, mm -hmm. and we need to have those corporations reinvest in America, and we need to create more jobs because of that. 
So that's the second part of our plan, is tax reform. The third part of our plan is, what are we going to do about Obamacare? I mean, it's no secret it's not working. We, the White House just announced um, a day or two ago that premiums are going to be increased right. up to 25% and right. even more in some cases. And even the president has admitted that there are significant problems with Obamacare. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do to change? And what's our alternative? We have a plan to make um, health care much more affordable for people in this country. And the, so that's the third part. The fourth part of our plan is, what are we going to do about poverty? Mm -hmm. We have 45 million people in this country in poverty. We have 46 million people in this country on food stamps. Right. What are we going to do to get people back to work? So the fourth part of our plan is a comprehensive ideas of what we're going to do to put people back to work. The fifth part of our plan deals with national security. I mean, it's no secret that our country is not seen as the superpower and our foreign, foreign policy is not where it should be. Right. And so we have 67 pieces of legislation that we've put forward under national security that's going to help make sure that we are a strong nation again. And finally, the last part of our plan is Article 1. Congress, not only this Congress, but Congress in, in past years have exceeded more and more authority to the executive branch. We need to rein in that authority and bring the power back to the people. What are we going to do to bring the power back to the people and back to Congress? And so the sixth part of our plan is a detailed plan of how we're going to do that. All right. Uh, moving on, as far as uh, you know, you talked about the economy, but of course the instability in the Middle East is just, I mean, yeah. it's almost out of control. It I is. mean, at what point can uh, the United States get in there and at least sort of realign things a little bit better? Should they? Well, it's not only is? just in the Middle East. <clears throat> We're seeing ISIS in our own country. Right. Look at San Bernardino. Uh, the attacks we had uh, so close to us here at home, and we're seeing it across our nation. So we really need to make sure we have a very strong foreign policy uh, plan so that we take control of ISIS and we get more stability in the Middle East. You know, it starts with a commander in chief. Uh, you have to have a very strong commander in chief so so they understand mm -hmm. that when you cross the red line, we, we're going to take action. And under our Better Way agenda, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have plans in when it comes to foreign policy, what sort of ideas that we've put forward to make sure we are a strengthened country. All right. The veterans. Mm -hmm. Over the years, over the decades, the veterans seem as though they've, uh, you know, the, I think a lot of them felt they've been cheated out of a lot of different uh, a lot of different income that was due them, but primarily their care, Correct. Uh, their ongoing care for a lot of obviously related issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw what happened right. over in the VA in Phoenix right. where you had many of our veterans who have served our country and taken good care of us and protected our freedom. They weren't getting the care that they needed. They, Many of them were put on wait lists and never saw a doctor or never got the treatments that they needed. And it has been a big scandal. In fact, I sit on the Judiciary Committee, and twice now, when Loretta Lynch, our Attorney General, has come forward mm -hmm. and talked to us, and, and I have asked her, you know, what are we doing to take care of our veterans? What are we doing to look into the, the crisis in the VA? And I'm not getting responses from from the Department of Justice, and mm -hmm. I'm extremely frustrated, and we continue to put more and more pressure on them to come up with the answers. The problem is, is the bureaucracy in the VA. We have to do something about that bureaucracy because we have to put our veterans first, and, and we have to continue to put pressure on the Department of Justice and on this administration to make sure we get this VA issue turned around. And so yeah. as a member of Congress, that is one of my highest priorities, and I'm continuing to put the pressure on them. Let me, uh, one more question to you, kind of going back to the economy. Mm -hmm. There is is uh, the push by uh, mainly the Democratic side about a national minimum wage of mm -hmm. usually $15 an hour is the right. one that comes up. $15 an hour here in Orange County may not go all that far. $15 right. an hour living in the Midwest, you can almost buy a home right. with that. What's your view on having 
a, a national minimum wage at 15 or whatever it may be. Well, my concern with raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour is going to have the opposite effect mm -hmm. of what the other side thinks is going to have. I mean, the cost of labor to run a small mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. is extremely expensive. And what we're seeing happening with this idea is small businesses are having to lay people off right because they cannot afford it and they're giving them less hours you add you add the $15 an hour minimum wage on top of the Obamacare mm -hmm. mandate that you have on these businesses we're seeing businesses go out go go out of business mm -hmm. they simply cannot afford it so what we're seeing happening is less people are going to have a job because there's not the infrastructure from the businesses in order to hire these people to maintain their business. So we have to be very careful when we're saying we want to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. We need to let the free market determine what sort of minimum wage we should have. All right. Very good. Always good to see you. Thank and, you. And I want to tell folks, if you want to find Mimi Walters online, it's uh, very easy to do so. The website, you can just, uh, what I tell people is just put her name in, uh, do a Google search, and it'll take you right there. <laughs> it's uh, walters.house.gov, am I right? Yes, walters.house.gov. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but I you don't need to remember that. Yeah. Just put in her name like I did, and it, that's the easiest way uh, to get to her. And from there, I'll, also, you'll get her contact information on her website. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Take care, too. and we'll be right back.